Welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We move straight to checking out the front pages of our national dailies this morning. As usual, we have Chris Nwandu join us to make sense of all of this. Good morning, Chris. It's good to have you join us. Thank you. With love from Abuja, good morning. Good, good morning. morning all right, so I start off with the leadership newspaper. Let's uh, check out the leadership and find out what's making the rounds on the leadership newspaper this morning. Now, the banner caption talks about COVID-19 and uh, the vaccination. COVID-19 vaccination mandate for federal workers begins. And let's not forget that today being the 30th of November, uh, the federal government is saying the deadline for that vaccination, you know, ends today. As three Nigerian travelers dictated with Omicron variant in Canada, Hong Kong, uh, you also have continued to observe COVID-19 protocols and CDC tells Nigerians. We're looking for answers. WHO is quoted on that. You also have another caption reading, nine bodies recovered, 252 inmates escape. Uh, that's the Joss prison attack. And nine recaptured. That's also another writer you find this morning. APC denies zoning chairmanship to North Central. Quite interesting. And you also have Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey quits to allow growth. And just as we had, you know, that uh, banter this morning in the studio. Uh, another caption reads, Bandit profiling. Not all Fulanese are terrorists. Northern elders quoted on that as well. And uh, that's the much we can take. But just before we move away from that, you have the 30 billion naira duty. We're yet to get directive to ground private jets. Find the who's saying all of that this morning on the leadership newspaper. All right, moving away from that one straight up to the Daily Independent. The lead Headline for this morning, confusion in APC as factional caretaker committee emerges. Uh, three uh, writers, a Sachs uh, Boni led committee fixes convention for February 26. Names Lawan Bajabia Mila into committee. Direction is felonious, uh, says Akpano Dede. More stories on the front page of the Daily Independent. Eight more years of APC led FG will break up Nigeria. That's according to RU. Says Buhari's government biggest cancer affecting the country. Other stories on the Daily Independent just jailbreak. Uh, Nigerian Correctional Services operative attacker. Nine inmates killed. 252 escape. Two policemen missing. Three injured in Ebony community attack. Abducted victims escape as NAF jet raids bandits camps, kills scores. A must are above the masthead. COVID-19 Omicron federal government uncertain over appropriate control measure to adapt. All right, uh, beside that particular story, Northern elders oppose unconditional release of Namdi Kano. All right, on the red slip or strip rather below, Electoral Act Amendment, a most progressive bill from National Assembly, according to the National uh, Nigerian Labor Congress, NLC. Policeman, FRSC officer, shot dead as robbers attack bank in AKT. Those are the stories you find on the front page of the Daily Independent this Tuesday morning. Away from the Daily Independent newspaper, let's check out The Nation. Banner caption reads, Omicron COVID-19 variant, Nigeria on the alert, says government. And that's a bold caption. Result of sample sequencing expected today. Entry points on the watch. Review travel guidelines begin Friday. APC PDP resume hostility ahead of 2023. Why ruling party should not return by IU. Uh, PDP is no alternative, says uh, Fana Hussein, all of that. And uh, you also have officer, nine others killed in custodial center attack. Uh, that's in Joss. We talked about that yesterday. 252 inmates missing. A writer underneath the board caption. APC chair slot not zoned to North Central, says party. And World Bank hails Kogi over 2022 audited financial report. North elders... 
Ohanese clash over Namdi Kanu and speculators sell hoarded dollar to court losses, says Bankers Committee. And uh, that's the much we can take this morning on the Nation newspaper. And finally, the punch this morning, Omicron variant seems to uh, be uh, on all the dailies this morning. Uh, travel bans loom as Canada detects uh, Nigeria-linked cases. With some riders, their federal government uh, threatens a stiffer punishment for travelers with fake coronavirus vaccination card. Sending samples to South Africa disgraceful shows NCDC lacks national pride. That's according to Timory, uh, you know, that's um, a virologist uh, talking there. Uh, nine inmates, one gunman officer shot dead in just prison invasion. Notorious Ogun cultist caught with gun during a raid on hotel lodges. Uh, more stories on the punch this morning. 80 pellets of cocaine excreted you know, to raise uh, 7 million naira for IMF. Uh, all right, that's on the Punch newspaper. More stories. Explosion, Abiodo, Carpets, DPO, Orders, Redeployment, Hoodlums, Arrest. We are not against restructuring. Our demand is Biafra referendum. That's according to IPOB. More stories uh, above uh, the masthead. Despite uh, federal government revenue crunch, NIS projected passport revenue drops by 96%. Below that story, federal government's capital market debt servicing gulps 2.18 trillion naira in 10 months, according to a report. Electoral Act Amendment, Buhari writes INEC, seeks advice on direct primaries and uh, other captions there. A commission uh, has seven days to respond to Buhari's letter. President will consult all stakeholders, according to Buhari's spokesman. Those are the stories you can find on the front page of the punch this morning. All right, let's quickly uh, get Chris Wandu to join the conversation this morning. Once again, thank you for joining us. We do appreciate your time, Chris Wandu. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning once again. Oh. Okay, so we start off with the leadership newspaper. Uh, COVID-19 vaccination mandate for federal workers begins today. Yes, um, the federal government gave a directive a few uh, months back that uh, all federal workers um, have to get the job. And uh, anybody that refuses to get the job by the 1st of December will not be allowed into any of the federal government offices. Um, that means that if you don't have the certification that you've taken at least one of those jobs, uh, it's supposed to be two, uh, you will not be allowed to enter any of the offices. And um, that is the federal government directive. But I'm still finding it difficult how they'll be able to implement that. Uh, one, we don't have enough buses to go around. And uh, in a population of over 200 million, uh, at the last count, I don't think we've had uh, in this country about, I don't think we have more than 4 million, or let me say mass, 5 million doses. And that 5 million doses is supposed to be two. So if you are talking about, divide it into two, that is about 2.5 million. And in a country, a population of, of this nature. So are you saying that those that cannot be able to get the job, that uh, they would make it to your office? And that, let us even take it that uh, they take the job with this uh, current uh, variant, the Omicron, that is, is uh, ravaging the whole uh, world. The fact that you took a job does not necessarily mean that you cannot get COVID. There have, there have been several people that have died of COVID-19, even after they've taken the the two jobs, you can check all over the internet, even in the United States and the rest of them. So, but I think it's just a way of encouraging Nigerians to do the need to And um, I'm still going to, I, I don't know how that will pan out. We are entering into the Christmas, uh, starting from tomorrow is December 1. What is more important to me is that we're more careful and especially, especially do the needful at our airport. A lot of people will be trooping into Nigeria from different parts of the world for the Christmas. And that, to me, that is where the challenge is, not to those uh, federal, federal workers. Because uh, the way we are and the way we are structured, there's a lot of corruption, uh, corruption going on. Nigerians are moving into the country or foreigners are moving into the countries, even though that they have a job. And they just pay some talking to uh, airport officials and they just walk into the country. Because ordinarily, the, the protocol is that if you are coming from, uh, uh, you are traveling from another country, despite the fact that you have, um, I think at times you even ask to quarantine. Some other countries are doing that. 
But here, you don't, you don't see us doing that. And that is where, for me, the challenge. So the government should be focusing more on making sure that those are coming in for the Christmas from all parts of the world get a fully vaccinated so that we don't have a high uh, in this uh, in this. But don't forget also, I, I heard that the, uh, the, um, the president of um, South Africa will be coming to Nigeria. I got the report right in the next few days. Um, the South Africa um, has been put to have been the source of the Omicron variant. Although South Africa is saying that it's not from us, what was when somebody that had it came into South Africa and we de detected it. So that does not mean that it's emanated from men. But there's a lot of variants all over the world now, and we just have to be careful and within it. All right, away from that one. Uh... Let's talk politics. Uh, Daily Independent, uh, their main uh, headline this morning, uh, confusion in APC's factional caretaker committee uh, emerges. Uh, Sachs, uh, bony led committee, you know, fixes convention for February 26. You know, what is this telling concerning um, the APC, what with uh, factions here and there, you know, and uh, the 2023 elections around the corner? Are, are they not sending sort of mixed signals to, you know, party members and of course are giving some other opposition you know the you know, the the position to just uh, maybe want to come above them well if you're a student of literature um china chibe wrote a, a book things fall apart and i'm sure you read that book, wonderful book yes, so <laughs> what we have in abc is now things fall apart and the center can no longer hold and um well i don't know whether it's a conquo he came away from now, whoever involved. <laughs> but but uh, the true sense of it, um, there's so much confusion going on uh, in APC. And that is why I have to commend the opposition party, PDP, where they were able to get their ass together. You know, success comes with this, it's so many challenges. The problem with APC is that they've not been able to manage their success since they took over power in 2020. Probably one, they were not ready for what happened to them. Um, they didn't know that uh, victory would just come on their laps, just put it on your, their laps like that. Or um, they just didn't know what to do with power. And they don't forget, politically, that APC is, was made up of several political parties. There are several political parties that made up a APC. And that is what we are finding now. Every part, there was the CPC, there was the AD, there was a fashion of uh, was it Abga or whatever, and other APP and the rest of them. So what everybody is going for the soul of the party, and most importantly for 2023, which is... Uh, uh, um, another presidential election year or election year. The fact remains that the APC is going to run into problem. You know why? Buhari, who has remained the soul of that party, the rally point of that party, is not going to contest in 20, uh, 2023. And for that, APC will make you find it very, very difficult picking a, a candidate that can match the status of Buhari, who can be a rallying point. Buhari had, even without going to the poll, Buhari have a book voters, uh, uh, backers, especially from the north, close to about 12, 13 million or thereabout. At any given point, once he stepped out, even when he during his days at CPC, don't forget he tried about four times before he could get it the fifth time or thereabout. So what is happening in APC is that there are so many factors, there are so many godfathers, there are so many people who are now going for the soul. And the caretaker committee has set up since to have at least be useful. As far as concerned, I don't know why APC is taking even that. Don't forget that. There was a judgment of uh, judgment on the election in um, on those states by the Supreme Court, and it was it was said that they would have lost that uh, that uh, case if the the party involved have joined the uh, interim uh, interim committee of the APC in that suit, but they didn't, and that was also. And I know that so many members of APC, including the senior advocate of Nigeria, a minister in the. Uh, in the current cabinet, Festus Kiyamu, who have been saying that this theoretical committee as it were. So, but let's wait and see. APC has set up a reconciliatory committee led by former uh, national state uh, governor um, to, to do the job. I don't know what he can do because before now, we've had two reconciliation committees that were set up. And they come up. One was chaired by the first um, national chairman of uh, APC, the former um, Osho State um, governor, Akonde. The second was chaired by uh, Jagaba himself, the Ashwaju, the, uh, uh, the big, uh, big man in APC. And that one was frustrated. Oh, I think that it was under Ashwaju. Sure so I don't know what Adamus um, um, reconciliation committee has, but maybe you just have to be careful. They have to get it. In the last Congress that they had, they had um, um, uh, all sorts of Congresses in about 13 to 14 states, you know, about two fashions. You know, and finally, you know how they lost most of the states. 
during the large general election, you know, you remember what happened in some of the states. What happened in uh, in River State? What happened in uh, Bayesa State? What happened in uh, uh, which one is this? Safara State? Where they had to lose to PDP. I hope they got their ass and they are already on that route again, especially in Safara. There's too much <laughs> problem going on in the Zafara APC, where you have about three parts of the current governor, that of a former senator, and also the former governor. Let's have this a bit. They just have to be very careful and not to take their party members for granted. All right, let's just stay with the leadership newspaper this morning. Uh, the Joss prison attack, nine bodies recovered, 252 inmates escaped, and nine recaptured. What are your thoughts? Well, a jailbreak too many for me. A jailbreak too many. We've had so many this year. We have in Oweri, we've had in um, Kogi State, we have in Oyo State. Now we are having in Joss. And the first impression and the first news coming came, that was coming out is that those behind the attack were trapped. That was the report we got initially. And when we said they were trapped, which means that they could have been, they would have been captured. Have they been captured? If they have been captured, have they been interrogated? And over 100 escaped. Those that escaped in Kogi. Ibadan and other places have not been recaptured. You just say, oh, the three. Those that you see that have been captured, those coming back are those that are very hungry and don't know where to go. The other ones have escaped. Most of these are dangerous criminals. Some are bandits, some are kidnappers, some are terrorists, and the rest of them. They'll just go and retrigate themselves uh, into the system and continue to. Uh, and that, that's to me, point to, the, uh, point to the, our security architecture, especially within the Ministry of Interior, which is the supervising um, ministry. Uh, ministry uh, that is in charge of uh, correctional centers or prisons, as we call them. They comes to question also the uh, capability of the Minister of Interior in the person of Ralph Arigbo I remember that when he came initially, he said he didn't know much about the immigration or, or prison. I don't know whatever it is. But it's a wake-up call for us. We cannot be capturing our these people and keeping them in prison and allow them to go back to the society. It signals a very dangerous... And that in itself also signal a lot of negative um, this angle to uh, Nigerian security, especially within the international community. If you can capture criminals and on a daily basis they're escaping, then there's a problem. That means there's instability. That in itself has the spiral effect, even on the economy. The president is moving around the whole world, calling on uh, foreigners to come and invest in Nigeria. How will you invest in a country that, where, where you know that security of life and properties are not secured? How will you, how will you ever do that? So. Uh, I think there should work is, is a wake up call. Um, there should be a synergy between the various security agencies, the army, the DSS, the police, and the rest of them, and make sure that our correctional centers are well secured. And this shouldn't be happening at all. It shouldn't be happening. It's just quite unfortunate. All right, the Northern Elders um, are in the news. Uh, they are opposing unconditional uh, release of um, Nandi Kanu, and they are also saying that not all Fulanese are terrorists. Chris, your reaction? Uh, well, you can see me laughing. <laughs> uh, but it's not a laughing matter. Uh, well, uh, personally, I've always felt that there's the need for us to uh, find a, a way of negotiating ourselves into some of the... We have so many issues be, be, uh, before us and with everything us in Nigeria. The issue of agitation is also one of them. And that in itself is facing a lot of problems, especially in the South is where personally I come from. In the last few months, it has not been an easy thing for us. So was from the South is that the killings and killings and the rest of them. Uh, prior to the election in Anandapa State, so many people were killed. And the, 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 the husband of a revered uh, former minister and the uh, DG of NADAC, a professor, yeah. was yeah. killed in Anambra. You remember that vivid? Yeah. Just a few days ago, another guy was, uh, one guy was killed in Anambra State. I had a word, they were told they were the, the supporter of Bahari or whatever. It was that. The fact is that the high level of insecurity is very high. We should be very, very careful the way we are. For me, every Nigerian have a right to agitate. If I don't, feel, even in my father's house, if I feel my father is not doing, is doing something that I don't like, I will, I, will, I will agitate. I will say, Daddy, what you are doing is not right. What you are doing to me is not right. It is within my father to be able to come in together and be able to make sure that some of the things I, I raise. I've always said it once every time that I am not a supporter of Nam Khan. I'm not a member of iPod. I'm an Igbo man. Not every Igbo man is a member of iPod. But the fact is that the messages being sent by Nam Khan resonates with all of us Igbos, irrespective of whatever. Are we talking about marginalization? Yes. Are we not marginalized? And people continue to ask, CK, how can you say you're your people? We are marginalized. I, I, 
I'm, at least you're saying that. And we've said that with that. So most often than not, I've always said, leave the messenger. Look at the message. And that, to me, is the key. So if uh, we, if there's a need for, uh, for negotiation with Nam the Kalu, getting released and making sure that even in Buha and the rest of them, every agitator, it's not only in Nigeria that people agitate, in the Spain, there's a serious agitation. If you know of, if you're a football fan, or you're, a, 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 you're a fan of Baka, Barcelona, most people in Barcelona want to go away. They are always they are at war with those in, in Madrid, which is the uh, sitting government in, in, in Spain. Till tomorrow, that is simple Spain. Spain, in terms of independence, has, I think they stayed over 500, 500 years as an independent country. Even in the United States today, the blacks are still agitating. So people in the US want to leave. It's happening all over the world. But they're not going to arrange any themselves. So what I feel is that any kind of negotiation that can bring lasting peace in Nigeria, I will go for it. So if they are going to negotiate, the president said when organizing the people visited the more people leaders of thought visited that it's going to look at the request people before it on the release of Nam the Kalu. Let's see how that pans out uh, in the field. Don't forget also Ochi Kalu just few days ago visited Nam the Kalu uh, on the same matter. But let's see how it, uh, it goes. Oh, but quickly, Chris, uh, you didn't react concerning um, the uh, their uh, position on not all Fulanese are terrorists. That they did what? The Northern Elders, they were also quoted as saying that not all Fulanese are terrorists. Of course, not all Fulanese are terrorists. Just like not every woman is a member of IPOD. It's a fact. And it's a fact. Not all Fulanese are terrorists. I, I agree with that. But the fact is that those that are terrorists among them, what are they doing about it? Are they trying to make sure that they feed them out? Because I ha we have a saying in Igbo land, my brother, you're an evil man. Once a finger, as I still go back to uh, uh, things fall apart. Once a finger, you know that he said, once a finger touches oil, it soils the other four. Yes, and that is what is happening. The full I need that we are used to, when I was a young boy growing up in Opo, in Imo State, where I come from, uh, we used to see that. I'm sure if you grew up in Imo, you see those full I people carrying cows in those days with stick at their back. I would be following them and singing and singing, and they'll be giving us for. Uh, uh, what's that, the food or something? Those things they used to, you know, those meat, and they give, we share them for kilometers and come back. That is the kind of, that, those are the full and new with me of. Those are the few of people like me grew up to know. But the fact that this so called the full and new is, is, and, and these people, their elders are not doing much to be able to make sure that, because what is happening now is these few criminals that are full and new, that are giving the entire full and new nation a part. President Buhari is a full and new person. Is he a terrorist? He's not now. And so many other, not now. There are so many of them. Most of the governors are full Are you calling them? They are not terrorists. So what I'm saying is that within the context of those few that are giving the this ethnic group a bad name, something should be done, and they must be fished out and punished until we start building on the mechanism of fishing at these people and punishing them. So many of them that have been arrested. Have you seen anybody sent to uh, sent to the court, prosecuted and jailed? The body language of the president. Is giving Nigeria the impression that he's shooting people from his own area. And that to me is not good enough. And that was how it seems we are having this breed out within these people. If we can be able to handle, make sure that we get them arrested, those getting involved in this are prosecuted. Then, then you know that this will be, but for now, for me, and as I still say, not every Fulani is a terrorist. Neither is every people man, uh, an agitator, a supporter of IPOG and the rest of them. But the fact remains that the government has to do something. I make sure these people that are committing all this crime. They have, they have left, you know, initially they started that, uh, uh, this thing, but now they're going to banditry. That is why you see all of, all, every place. You cannot move from Abuja to Kaduna without being kidnapped. Every part of the north, you cannot move around again. And what are we doing? What are they doing? They're negotiating with them. Those that were arrested for, uh, uh, those uh, bandits that were arrested for terrorism and the rest of them, after they say they've repented, they give them money and send back and say they've, uh, they've, they've forgiven them. You don't continue to do that. If you continue to do that, you're only making a mess of the works of our security agents because that dampens them. How can they arrest people that have been that with killing soldiers, killing brigadier generals, killing generals, killing people at the end of it? They say, oh, they are repentant. Uh, this thing. If we talk, they say, oh, didn't you, those in the Niger Delta, well, they're not giving. I did the same thing. Those, those killing did not. What are they agitating? For those in the Niger Delta, that was a cause. And that was because of the, um, the, 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 uh, the, the level of pollution within their area. And they said, please look into our problem. Those killing in the north, what is the agitation? And what well, are but, they but, but I think that it won't be fair for us to justify it, whether or not um, you know, there's 
uh, an actual cost for it. We understand the agitation in the, you know, in the Niger Delta region. But mother is mother, and it's a crime. If you look at the Constitution, and that's why I'm very concerned about the fact that, I mean, we've not really had arrests. This person's, a lot of people are just getting away with so much. Killing is killing. Mother is mother. And that's a crime if we look at the laws that actually govern our nation. So I would I rather expect that we don't begin to, you know, justify, you know, a particular act as much as we understand, you know, the intentions surrounding all of these actions. It's like saying jungle justice. Somebody comes to your house and they're stealing from you. Should you kill them? Taking the no, laws into your hands. Let, my quick reaction to that. I'm a student of law. I know that we have a criminal, we have our criminal acts. And there are civil, there are civil uh, procedures, there are criminal procedures. If you are caught for act of terrorism or whatever you call, or you call it, the law is there. And that was why I was laughing some time ago. They said that we're waiting, we're waiting for the president to declare them terrorists. And you don't need to wait for the president. The law is already there. It's in our criminal codes. It was in the 1999 constitution as amended. So you don't wait for anybody. And they were celebrating. They said the court I have declared them terrorists. And I was laughing. The court doesn't have to declare anybody a terrorist. If you are caught engaging in certain acts, then the law is there on how to deal with you. You either get killed or you get, even some states have passed a law on kidnapping. Are you, aren't you aware? And some states have enshrined that in that law that was passed. What I'm asking, how many people have been brought to book? Even in those states where kidnapping and the rest of them have become a criminal act. We are just paying leave service to this, and that is why this is very. You want to continue to make sure that we deal with people. I'm not comparing them with the, what we're talking about. Here. What I'm saying is that when you're agitating, it's just like iPod is doing. People will ask iPod, why are you agitating? What is your focus? Those that are killing, what is their focus? Those in Niger Delta, they, are, they were agitating because there was something happening in their place. And once that was addressed, and that was it. So what I'm saying is that you come to the court and say, oh, why well, we are engaging in banditry is because we are marginalized. We are this, this, uh, and government look at it, but government, government cannot look at anything from the, those uh, killing in the north because they have no reason to bring what is pure criminality and that should be addressed as quickly as possible. No, but the point still is whether or not there's a reason you shouldn't in indulge. And that's what I'm saying. So whether the bandits actually have a reason or, you know, those in the Niger Delta have a reason, you can't take the laws into your hand. That's exactly what I'm saying. But let's move away from that now. We're on, the, we're on the same page on that. We're on the same page of that. I'm just using that for emphasis sake. I'm not saying there's any right for uh, whatever level of criminal. I've said it. Even those in the Niger Delta, that are doing the, so many of them were arrested. So many of them were arrested and prosecuted. Uh, and that was, it was when, during the time of your economic sabotage, I'm sure you still remember that, when the issue of economic sabotage came out in our uh, criminal books. We were talking about so if you vandalize a, a pipeline and you are caught, they were arrested and most of them were, uh, were uh, arrested and jailed. But what I'm saying is that what we're having now is pure criminality on the part of most of these people doing these things. And they are collecting ransoms and nothing is being done. So many of them have been arrested and not simply prosecuted. How do you think that they will stop? They will stop. And we show the uh, on, on show the political will to be able to handle this issue. Okay, and so I think that they're taking a lot of leverage from the uh, from president. The president gave the security uh, uh, chiefs a marching order, and I was asking two days ago, which marching are, are we marching forward or marching backward? Which marching order? How many times will the president give marching order? Yeah, we'll give them marching order. And I, I, I think we'll, let's just move away from that now, so we can share your thoughts on other issues. As well, let's stay more with the Omicron uh, COVID nineteen variant. The Nigerian government says. Uh, we're actually on the alert. Uh, that means that our borders are being checked, entry points are being checked, and we're expecting uh, samples of sequencing that has been sent to South Africa. But what are your thoughts? I mean, we still have to send, you know, samples outside of Nigeria. feels like we're not ready for anything. Uh, we started with Omicron, and I thought we'd dealt with that issue as quickly as we could. Uh, I, we started with it. I, I spoken effectively on that. And... Um, but it's still uh, quite unfortunate that we still have to set the whole side at this point in time. What is NAVDAC doing? Can NAVDAC, don't they have the facility to be able to test that and lock them? So, it, most often they are not. Uh, in, <laughs> uh, I still go back to my, yes, I still go back to my, uh, I love my language a lot because there are certain things you cannot express what? very well with English. But when you say it to your local language, this is what we call Chibo and no also. If well, you well, we're looking at the Chibo, nation news right, right, right. <laughs> Yes, that is every yes. Every morning you get to see another, and that is where we rule. 
uh, either we should be able, by now we shouldn't be depending on any country for us to send it to Starport. We should have all those facilities. And that was why when this COVID started, some of us were pushing that we should start looking for a local uh, angle to this. We cannot continue depending on the foreign country for vaccines. Because those countries are depending on us who also have their own challenges. So if fire falls on you and falls on your child, you first of all quickly remove yours because looking at the child. And that is what's happening. So there is politics of vaccine going across the world. It's for the politics of vaccines. So the United States will only give you after he mentioned that he has vaccinated most of the, his own people. There was even a time that we were having serious challenges between the US and Europe. Even within Europe itself, they were having issues. Germany, UK, and the rest of the West side is oh. Germany was holding up back some, to some of the vaccines that were being produced in there. They didn't want to the EU address it. So what I think that the solution to our problem is a homegrown um, grown vaccine of our own. And I think we have all it takes to be able to do that. All right, uh, Chris, um, Wando, that's as much as we can take on this particular segment of um, the breakfast of the press. We must say a very big thank you to you uh, for your analysis and, of course, all your input uh, on this segment. We do appreciate them. Thank you very much. I do have a wonderful day ahead. All right, uh, we'll take a quick break and when we'll come, we'll back, we'll be looking at the Omicron variant and uh, we have a guest who will be doing a detailed analysis and uh, what we should be doing, what we travel bans, you know, all across Europe, America and uh, some Southeast Asian countries in a moment to join us again. <laughs>